Welcome back everyone. I'm so happy you've joined me again. This is Sure Voice with Ada Sure. We're going to talk today about having focus and power in your performances. How do we achieve that? Number one, we have to silence the mind. We have to focus the breath, focus the posture into a way that we can breathe efficiently and then we have to find a way to silence that mind. So for, for me, what I like to do uh, is just do a very, very rapid breath like this. So one, two, three, four, stop. One, two, three, four, stop. One, two, three, four, stop. And this is good whether you're brand new or, you, or you've been doing this for years. So it's an F. So you see, you don't see me going on F like that, right? With the little smile. And that is start, immediately starts to wake this and this up. <laughs> Just gets everything going. By doing that, I've already focused my mind on a specific task, which is related to my singing, which is breath. So let's go back and talk about focus and power. Let's do that also. Let's talk about what that means when it's time to practice. Now, I don't know about you, but I like to just be very lazy. And it kind of takes me a while to get myself going and feel that ebullient performing energy that I do have when it's needed. When it's not needed, it's like, well, I don't feel like putting it on. Are you like that? So, so we want to be able to quickly sort of move ourselves out of any lethargy or a feeling of mental um, spaciness, if you will, without having to go and now make 10 cups of coffee and get all stressed and bent out of shape to get ourselves back on track. So I find that this breath thing and walking around the room with my arms moving around and, and opening the so shoulder areas and feeling the chest lift and the back in here, open, not the overly rigid back is important. So of course, all of this has to do with a study and a application of posture and movement, which is essential. And I don't care if you never had a dance class, you have to start finding ways to learn how to move efficiently and elegantly. Now, many of you who are already in grad school or already in career, I hope that by now you have encountered Alexander Technique. If not, go and find an Alexander teacher. Start doing some Hatha Yoga. Um, in my work as a holistic voice coach, I've incorporated elements of Alexander Yoga and other cutting edge mind-body techniques within a step-by-step a, a, uh, -step system that helps people and helps my, my professionals be more efficient and of course helps the beginners as well to be more efficient in their instrument because last time I checked we sing with what you know not not I yeah I know if you said vocal cords okay very good very good but we sing more with our vocal cords we sing with our what with our body our whole body and especially with our whole breath support and what are we singing with too what, forget about the body part. Now there's other levels. We're singing with our, yes, we're a mind. And what else are we singing with? Our heart and our soul, I hope. Okay, so let's talk for a moment now. I wanna talk more specifically. You know, many times we, we might have to uh, portray uh, or sing a song in another language. I find this a lot with the American singers who, you know, we have to sing in a whole bunch of languages which aren't our native tongue, right? Uh, French or German or Italian. And obviously, if you don't know what you're singing about and you just know superficially, well, you have to correct that. And if you're already in career or about ready to start a career, I'm sure you're thoroughly grounded in the notion that you have to know what every word means word for word, not just a, a sort of a vague, transliterated a, a reinterpretation of the, of the art song, okay? However, 
I, I find a lot of times in the in the um, singing of certain art songs, especially of late, with the you know the recording industries is wonderful for us as voice historians. We can go back in time and hear these fantastic you know recordings of the great singers from a hundred years ago, and we can compare and contrast and make this great study. And that's a whole nother YouTube channel. <laughs> Which I could go on and on, you know, what's your favorite, you know, singers from the, or is it from the 20s, from the 30s, from the 40s and 50s, and name why, all those things. Okay, so let me slow down a little bit. So, how do we connect to the text of a 19th century uh, poet who is writing in a language that many of us today have forgotten how to connect to the imagery and, and, and the the syntax and the references of the 19th century. So I always like to ask my students a very, very simple question. And you'd be surprised how this simple question can really be helpful to you to go deeper into what are you really doing with that text or in that scene? So the question is, what is this song about that the the simpler pop lyrics of today uh, can be you can overlay them with a lot of different ideas but one of the things that i do want you to understand when i say what is the song about i don't want you to explain to me oh it's a sad song about someone who lost their lover that's something that you say to the audience to give them you know the story but for us as the interpreters of the text we do need to ask ourselves, what's the song about? And for me, without giving away all my trade secrets, I like to know what is the energies? What are the energies that I need to connect to? It's an emotional energy. And I like to encourage my students to find an emotional energy that gets them focused, that comes from your everyday life, your everyday routine that will also put your posture in something comfortable so for example let's say you're singing a very sad song so you get in this sort of wimpy sad stance to sing the sad song so that's mistake number one. If it's sad already, we don't have to wimp out and be sad too. Because we're doubling something that's already written in the music, it's already written in the song. So to be sad, that's a very, very general kind of general statement. It doesn't do anything to our imagination. So. These are my three keywords, feeling, imagination, and concentration. I touch upon it briefly in this book, but this book is not about feeling, imagination, and concentration per se, which that could be a whole nother book. But that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with feeling, imagination, and the concentration, the focusing on that feeling, on that imaginative little trigger that you're going to find that help you start the piece. So for example, okay, I'll share how I like to do my Carmen. I don't think of Carmen as sex, sexy. I'm going to be sexy now. That's not what I think about. Then we get sort of very um, stereotypical ideas of what that means. Well, first of all, I don't see Carmen as about being about that. I see her as a young, enterprising, independent, highly alive and vivacious and temperamental gypsy girl who goes outside of her gypsy life because she's interacting with business all the time. She's doing business for the tribe, right? you know. So, for example, for, for, for the habanera, for example, um, in my mind, to me, the habanera is more like being a cat. 
very still, kind of going to be toying and playing with everybody and very much in my own space. And I think about being a cat, very still, and then suddenly coming out and grabbing you. And that makes me feel more playful and more focused. That's for example. It doesn't have to be that. It could be something else. It could be you being in the store and like, I've got to find, I've got to find the right earrings. I really, I need that. That's the one I want. See, I mean, that fits for habanero, you see? It's nothing tried. It's, it's something for you. It's a little private, little trigger, imagination that you're going to focus on that gets you out of being nervous. Oh, my God. No, I have to sing habanero. Oh, everybody knows it. Okay, here we go. No, no. And everything starts to get very artificial. So um, one thing that, that I'm very interested in, in is creating authentic performancing. What does that mean? Who is singing? Who is singing this habanero, for example? Who? It's not the recording. Who is singing it? You. You are singing it. So you have to be you. And your Carmen will be beautifully you. Not an imitation of Obratsova or or uh, who, who was phenomenal or all the other greats that we've seen and we admire so oh, if I could only be like her oh God, I'm gonna try to be like that obviously we're never asked to be like that but subconsciously we are because going back to recording why because we have recordings both video and audio and it's very easy for us to be inspired and to mimic unconsciously to mimic mimic the great artist now mimicry has its place in singing and we all as great singers yes yes we're mimicking yes thank god we have an ideal of the kind of voice that we have we as a as a music loving vocal audience for the whatever. We have our ideals. Those ideals, of course, have changed over time. That's another whole nother discussion. But we have our ideals of what we consider. This is a beautiful tone. This is beautiful diction. This is authentic. This feels right. We're completely enraptured and captured by this artist's diction and by the way a lot of the times what we are really responding to is the precision and the spin of diction so a little formula to have an authentic performance you want focus mental focus to harness your power to have then an authentic emotional and dramatic imaginative uh triggers that you've selected to get you to be you rather than get you to think oh now here i'm cunning here i'm sexy here i'm angry it's too vague it's too vague it's not it doesn't do anything to your body your body has to be tricked into thinking something real here and then you overlay that with your text so you don't do that just by singing it you have to Speak the text. So going back to authentic performances, it's underlying all of that is your technique, your posture, your breath. Every word understanding what it means in that language. We're talking here about opera, right? The opera perform performances requires so much work and so much detail. And that's why it takes us years not enough just to have the voice. Now, if you're already a fluent Italian speaker and you're a fluent French speaker and a German speaker today, it still doesn't mean you're going to understand what you're singing about. You'd be surprised how many singers I say, so what's the song about? They actually don't know. They just recite the lines. They don't know what it's about. Even though they speak the language, they don't even understand the metaphors or the, what's being alluded to. So dig deep and make sure you do understand what it's about. And speak with a liter literature person. What is, what is being done here? What is this metaphor? What, do, what is this poem talking about? 
Okay. So it's, it's really my favorite subject is the interpretation. However, without the proper technique and the, without all of these uh, basics, you're not going to have the, the responsive instrument. Although, again, for the very talented and gifted who already have their voice gifted to them by God and they're just polishing it up, it's easier to tap into these levels of interpretation. So some have, have this ability more than others. For example, I have a young, um, a young student with me now. She's been with me for about five years. She started when she was nine and now she's 14. So she's been growing and growing as a singer and as a, as a dancer. And, and it's been wonderful to be part of that trajectory in her life. They have other students who are, you know, in their 50s and 60s, been performing all their life, and they do. They don't necessarily do opera. They do um, a lot of the, the beautiful uh, pop, folk, and uh, classics from from the 60s through the 80s. That's their repertoire, and we're always discovering new things in the songs that they're singing in in the poetry. You know, of Joni Mitchell, for example. Joni Mitchell's poetry is very sophisticated. So to find the meanings to take those songs out of the... Oh, well, I'm imitating Joni Mitchell now and singing for you. Like, who cares? I don't want an imitation of Joni Mitchell. I want Joni Mitchell. If you're going to sing that song, I want your interpretation. Within the stylistic confines or the parameters that we associate with Joni, but not to be trying to be Joni Mitchell and superficially imitating what we consider her as her sound. And the same thing with being a Verdi singer, a Puccini singer. So I hope this has been of help. Now, many of you. Uh, who are reaching out uh, are busy in career and you don't have time for regular lessons. That's fine. We can work on Zoom. We can work when you're in town. And we can, you know, you need a spot check on an aria, your aria or you want to, you're having particular issues with certain phrases or a certain section of the role. Give me a call. Let's see what we can look into and figure out as a way for you to be more focused in that particular aria or that particular scene that perhaps your your regular teacher or your, your stage director or whoever it is, wherever it is, haven't quite solved that problem for you. And it's so helpful, as we all know, to have a, another person on our team that we can go to and say, can you help me with that? I'm still not finding the solution. Um, now, when my mother was alive, uh, she was a wonderful voice coach, teacher, and singer. So many times I would go, turn to her and say, listen to what I'm doing. A lot of times her advice was, it's fine, just stop worrying about it. <laughs> that was good too. With looking into the text, what are you singing about? What is it for you? Find, find the way for you to connect alive. And you can play a game with yourself. Put yourself in an ordinary situation. How would I sing this song if I was it uh, shopping? How would I sing it? What's on my mind when I shop? How do I act? And that's a little game you can play with yourself. Opens up the dramatic possibilities for you. It's a lot of fun. And uh, in workshop, I do that with a lot of people. It's so much fun to see how they instantly get in totally different flow of the body and the different energy uh, that starts to come into their singing, how much more present they become. And uh, it's so, so much fun. So uh, have a wonderful, wonderful week. Sure Voice, I'm on Facebook, uh, my website, Sure Voice. Remember to please comment, share, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. This is Ada Sure wishing you have a wonderful, blessed day and enjoy every moment of your existence because today is the day that God made just for you to enjoy and to remember the divine in your life.